Hi, it's Mark from Embedded Pro and I'm back investigating the OKDo E1 board. This week I'm going to continue my investigation of the board by looking at the pins and the peripheral config tool and this will carry on from where we left off last week. So here's my OKDo E1 board and this week I'm going to use the MCU Expresso config tools to connect it up to this weather clickboard from my friends at Microelectronica. The interface will be I squared C and that's my least favorite of all the interfaces on these microcontrollers. But I'll make it really easy and I'll show you how to use the power of MCU Expresso to make that job really, really quick and easy. I'm going to start my investigation today on the OKDo website. So here I am at okdo.com and I've got the development boards page open and here's our OKDo E1 dev board. So let's just open that. I started at this website because I want to take a look at the pin multiplexing on the OKDo E1 board. Let me just zoom up so we can see a bit more. And I know that the weather clickboard interfaces via an I squared C connection. And here on the E1 board, it's port one, pin 20, and port one, pin 21. I can see the Flexcom 4 I squared C lines. And when I'm configuring my project with the pins tool in MCU Expresso, I'm gonna be configuring Flexcom 4, serial clock and serial data for pins port 120 and port 121. Well, let's transition over to MCU Expresso now and start to configure our project. Well, you know the score by now. Here we are in MCU Expresso IDE. I'm using version 11.1 .1, and let's create a new project for our investigation. I use the new project wizard, of course. The OKDo E1 board is based on the LPC 55S69 SDK. Here it is. Next, we need to give the project a name and let me call this one Weather Station as we're using the Weather Clickboard. And that's all we really need to do. So let's create the project. MCU Expresso IDE builds the project. And here we are in our Weather Station example. I'm quickly going to set up the clocks like we did last week. Just come back in a moment and I'll have that all done. We saw from the expansion port diagram that we're going to use Flexcom 4 for our I squared C interface. So the first thing we need to do is to configure the clock for Flexcom 4. I'm doing that here in the clocks tool of MCU Expresso. The Flexcom clock select 4 multiplexer is shown here and I'm just going to select the free running oscillator 12 megahertz clock as the clock source for Flexcom 4. Here we see 12 megahertz as the base clock. Well, now we can switch to the pins configuration tool. Let me just do that here, switching to pins. And we remembered that the Flexcom 4 is the I squared C channel that we want to use. That was on port one pads 20 and 21, so PIO1 pad 20 is shown here. So let's connect that up. And for our application, we want that to be an I squared C channel. And they're listed here. It's going to be Flexcom 4 serial clock. We check it in this checkbox and we see that the pin is rooted down below, highlighted in yellow. That's now done. The other pad that we want to connect up is pad 21. You can select that here. And again, we want the Flexcom 4 serial data connection for I squared C. So I can check that and it's now rooted down below. So now we've configured the pad multiplexers for the I squared C function, but we still need to configure our I squared C module. And we'll do that with the peripherals configuration tool. So let's go to peripherals. And here we are. 
and I want to configure Flexcom 4 for I squared C. Well, we have this warning down in this problems because we've connected up the pins for Flexcom 4, but we haven't configured the peripheral. And there's an easy fix available. I can just right click and initialize that peripheral. Um, which one do we want to initialize? We want I squared C. Okay, and here we are. It all appears to be configured. But there is one change we need to make. We are going to be an I squared C master talking to the sensor on the weather click board. But the interface that we're going to use is not polling, but it's going to be this transfer interface. Well, that really is everything that we need to do. And so we can just update our code. OK, and there we have it. That's our project configured for I squared C. We do need to write some code and I'll explain where that comes from in just a moment. Let's go take a look at what code is generated. And as always down here in main, we've got init boot pins, init boot clocks and init boot peripherals. Quickly looking at init boot pins. And here is the init pins function and we can scroll down and we can look for flexcom4 configuration. Here we see port 1 pin 20 and port 1 pin or pad 21 being configured for the I squared C function. You can see flexcom4 serial clock and flexcom4 serial data. Okay, well that's great. Let's have a look at how the clocks have been configured. And as always, I can jump into the definition for the init boot clocks. We're using my configuration, boot clocks PLL 150, referenced from the free running oscillator 12. And we won't go through all the details. We saw that last week. And we can see here that the clock attach is connecting the free running oscillator 12 as a reference clock for the PLL0. And lastly, what about the peripheral configuration? So we can go into that function. And here is board init peripherals. This will take us and set up Flexcom4 init. And here at the top of the sheet is Flexcom4 init. We can see that it's referencing Flexcom4 with this Flexcom4 peripheral macro base address and it creates for us a flexcom4 transfer struct for configuring the i squared c peripheral and we'll see that in use in just a moment as always a new project wizard has created as the shell of a program and we're just going to need to add some source code there to help us configure this project to read the weather sensor now it's very easy to get stuck here because we have to write some code and kind of uh, what code do we write? Well, don't forget that there is an example project in the MCU Expresso SDK, which is useful for setting up I squared C. It's the I squared C read accelerometer value transfer example. And I've used that code as a kind of template for my I squared C code. Well, I have already got the code prepared, so let me just paste that into this weatherstation.c module. Well, you can see that I made a change to the project that the new project wizard has generated with a few function calls. We're going to printf i squared c example, read the BME280 sensor that's on the weather click board, and then we configure the i squared c transfer handle. This Flexcom4 peripheral base module is the macro that we just saw in peripherals.c. Here's a global handle that we can use to reference the I squared C Flexcom4 module. And here we're setting up a callback function that the peripheral driver will call back into our project. And we can just take a look at that simple code just here. So every time that there's a callback from our driver, we're going to end up in this function here. And we're just setting a completion flag or we're setting a NAC flag, depending on what the driver reports back. While we're here, let's have a quick look at the includes, the defines and the declarations. So 
We need to hash include the I squared C driver. So here's the, the header function FSL I squared C dot H, a free software library I squared C dot H. Reading from the BME 280 data sheet, I know that its I squared C slave address is 76 hex and the who am I register is register D0. And we can see that just here in the BME 280 data sheet. Here's the data sheet. Uh, we've got a register called ID at D0 and we'd expect that to read 60 hex. And here in the BME 280 data sheet, we can read the seven bit slave address for the sensor. And we'll be expecting to address it at slave address 76 hex. So here's the BME slave address 76 hex and the address register D0. We've got these global state variables, completion flag and NACT flag, and a global variable to hold the found slave address when we're communicating with the sensor. And finally, our application creates a transfer handle for I squared C and calls this function I squared C read Excel who am I? And I've just taken that from the I squared C driver example that I referenced earlier on. All we do in read Excel who am I is to configure the transfer handle with the slave address. We want to write to it. We want to set up the who am I register. And we want to create a transfer with no stop flags. So we access the I squared C peripheral. We wait for the callback flags to be set. Assuming we have a successful transfer, we record the slave address that we found successfully. And then we proceed to read from the who am I address in the sensor. We reconfigure the transfer handle, set up a non-blocking transfer. We wait for the transfer to be completed and that's signaled in the callback function. And assuming that the transfer was successful, we'll just print out the value that we found from register D0 in the sensor. And that will complete the example. So let's build our project. MSHIR Expresso IDE makes a probe discovery. It finds the Simpsys DAP probe built onto the OKDo E1 board and then proceeds to flash the image to the target and load the debugger with the ELF file. Of course, the project's built for core zero of the LPC 55S69. And here we are in our example project. We can run the project and watch the output come up into the console window through semi-hosting. So let's just click run here and well, the program's run. Let's access the BME 280 sensor. It finds it and reads the D0 address and finds the value 60 hex and confirms that the slave address is at address 76 hex. So there we have it. Here's us using the configuration tool from MCU Expresso for clocks, for pins and peripheral to set up this most complex of peripherals, the I squared C on Flexcom 4. Well, I hope you're enjoying the power of the MCU Expresso config tools and the OKDo E1 board. And if you enjoy these videos, then please share them like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be back next week to show you how to use the I squared C driver in MCU Expresso SDK and we'll read some values from this weather station clickboard. That's all for now. Goodbye.